Welcome to our channel, History of Everything. Today we speak about history of Yemen. The history of Yemen describes the cultures, events, and peoples of what is one of the oldest centers of civilization in the Near East. Its relatively fertile land and adequate rainfall in a moister climate helped sustain a stable population, a feature recognized by the ancient Greek geographer Ptolemy, who described Yemen as Eudaimon Arabia, better known in its Latin translation, Arabia Felix meaning, Fortunate Arabia, or Happy Arabia. Yemenis had developed the South Arabian alphabet by the 12th to 8th centuries BC, which explains why most historians date all of the ancient Yemeni kingdoms to that era. Between the 12th century BC and the 6th century AD, it was dominated by six successive civilizations which rivaled each other, or were allied with each other and controlled the lucrative spice trade. Ma'an, Kataban, Hadramaut, Azan, Saba, and Himyar. Islam arrived in 630 AD, and Yemen became part of the wider Muslim realm. With its long sea border between early civilizations, Yemen has long existed at a crossroads of cultures with a strategic location in terms of trade on the west of the Arabian Peninsula. Large settlements for their era existed in the mountains of northern Yemen as early as 5000 BC. Little is known about ancient Yemen and how exactly it transitioned from nascent Bronze Age civilizations to more trade-focused caravan kingdoms. The Sabaean Kingdom came into existence from at least the 11th century BC. There were four major kingdoms or tribal confederations in South Arabia, Saba, Hadramaut, Kataban and Ma'an. Saba is believed to be Biblical Sheba and was the most prominent federation. The Sabaean rulers adopted the title Mukarab generally thought to mean, unifier, or a, priest king. The role of the Mukarab was to bring the various tribes under the kingdom and preside over them all. The Sabaeans built the Great Dam of Merib around 940 BC. The dam was built to withstand the seasonal flash flood surging down the valley. Between 700 and 680 BC, the kingdom of Azan dominated Aden and its surroundings. Sabaean Mukarab Karabal Watar I changed his ruling title to that of a king, and conquered the entire realm of Azan, expanding Sabaean rule and territory to include much of South Arabia. Lack of water in the Arabian Peninsula prevented the Sabaeans from unifying the entire peninsula. Instead, they established various colonies to control trade routes. Evidence of Sabaean influence is found in Eritrea and northern Ethiopia, where the South Arabian alphabet religion and pantheon, and the South Arabian style of art and architecture were introduced. The Sabaeans created a sense of identity through their religion. They worshipped El Maka and believed themselves to be his children. 16. For centuries, the Sabaeans controlled outbound trade across the Bab el Mandeb a strait separating the Arabian Peninsula from the Horn of Africa and the Red Sea from the Indian Ocean. By the 3rd century BC, Kataban, Hadramaut and Ma'an became independent from Saba and established themselves in the Yemeni arena. Manaean rule stretched as far as Dedan, with their capital at Barakash. The Sabaeans regained their control over Ma'an after the collapse of Kataban in 50 BC. By the time of the Roman expedition to Arabia Felix in 25 BC, the Sabaeans were once again the dominating power in southern Arabia. Elias Gallus was ordered to lead a military campaign to establish Roman dominance over the Sabaeans. The Romans had a vague and contradictory geographical knowledge about Arabia Felix or Yemen. The Roman army of 10,000 men reached Merib, but was not able to conquer the city, according to Cassius Dio and Pliny the Elder. Strabo's close relationship with Elias Gallus led him to attempt to justify his friend's failure in his writings. It took the Romans six months to reach Merib and sixty days to return to Egypt. The Romans blamed their Nabataean guide and executed him for treachery. No direct mention in Sabaean inscriptions of the Roman expedition has yet been found. After the Roman expedition, perhaps earlier, the country fell into chaos and two clans, namely Hamdan and Himyar, claimed kingship, assuming the title King of Sheba and Du Radan. Du Radan i.e. Himyarites allied themselves with Aksum in Ethiopia against the Sabaeans. The chief of Bakal and king of Saba and Du Radan, El Sheri Yadib, launched successful campaigns against the Himyarites and Habashat i.e. Aksum El Sheri took proud of his campaigns and added the title Yadib to his name, which means, suppressor. He used to kill his enemies by cutting them to pieces. Sana'a came into prominence during his reign as he built the Gumdan Palace to be his place of residence. Aid flowing from Aksum. At the same time, Yusuf sent an army under the command of another Jewish warlord, Sherahil Yaqbil, to Najran. Sherahil had reinforcements from the Bedouin of the Kinda and Matahaj tribes, eventually wiping out the Christian community in Najran by means of execution and forced conversion to Judaism. 
Blady speculates that he was likely motivated by stories about Byzantine violence against Byzantine Jewish communities in his decision to begin his campaign of state violence against Christians existing within his territory. Christian sources portray Du Nuas as a Jewish zealot, while Islamic traditions say that he marched around 20,000 Christians into trenches filled with flaming oil, burning them alive. Himyarite inscriptions attributed to Du Nuas himself show great pride in killing 27,000, enslaving 20,500 Christians in Zafar and Najran and killing 570,000 beasts of burden belonging to them as a matter of imperial policy. It is reported that Byzantium Emperor Justin I sent a letter to the Aksumite King Caleb, pressuring him to attack the abominable Hebrew. A military alliance of Byzantine, Aksumite, and Arab Christians successfully defeated Du Nuas around 525 to 527 AD and a client Christian king was installed on the Himyarite throne. Esimiphios was a local Christian lord, mentioned in an inscription celebrating the burning of an ancient Sabaean palace in Merib to build a church on its ruins. Three new churches were built in Najran alone. Many tribes did not recognize Esimiphios's authority. Esimiphios was displaced in 531 by a warrior named Abraha, who refused to leave Yemen and declared himself an independent king of Himyar. Emperor Justinian I sent an embassy to Yemen. He wanted the officially Christian Himyarites to use their influence on the tribes in Inner Arabia to launch military operations against Persia. Justinian I bestowed the dignity of king upon the Arab sheikhs of Kinda and Ghassan in Central and North Arabia. 50. From early on, Roman and Byzantine policy was to develop close links with the powers of the coast of the Red Sea. They were successful in converting Aksum and influencing their culture. The results with regard to Yemen were rather disappointing. A Kindite prince called Yazid bin Kabshat rebelled against Abraha and his Arab Christian allies. A truce was reached once the Great Dam of Marib had suffered a breach. Abraha died around 555 to 565 AD. No reliable sources regarding his death are available. The Sassanid Empire annexed Aden around 570. Under their rule, most of Yemen enjoyed great autonomy except for Aden and Sana'a. This era marked the collapse of ancient South Arabian civilization, since the greater part of the country was under several independent clans until the arrival of Islam in 630. Thank you for listening friends. Keep support.